What's going on guys and for the win here we are back with our franchise mode as the Detroit Red Wings and we're picking up where we left off here just at the trade deadline in our first year here at the helm of the Detroit franchise 16 43 and 4 the tank is on last place in the league highly doubt we'll get that number one overall pick but we don't necessarily need it Hughes is nice I did have him in New York so I'm pro I'm not like you know if we don't get it I'm not going to trade up for him. If we do get it, I might take him because, well, a number one center will be really good to have. We do need one of those. But, yeah, I'm not going to, like, trade up for him or anything like that. Um, but we're here at the uh, deadline. We do have a couple moves to make. Vanek and Cronwall can both uh, be traded. Now, I did see a comment saying maybe wait till the draft to make some tr uh, to make the trades and try to, like, move up. But the problem with that is Vanek and Cronwall both on expiring contracts. We actually couldn't really trade them at the draft, so... It makes sense to trade them now while they have, you know, a bit of value for some stuff next year. So I might actually try to package both of them together. Uh, we'll see if there is a team. Capitals want them both. Okay. I don't know if they'll fall off that quickly, though. So I'm trying to kind of trade, trade them to, ooh, trade them to someone who I can maybe get a first from next year with. I don't think the pens are going to fall off that quick either. Either No, not with all that. All right. Let me see if Minnesota or something wants them. They do. And those contracts usually make it really difficult. However, next year, the pick won't be that low. Unfortunately, if it was, yeah, well, around that value. But uh, I don't know if we'll be able to grab that. And mm, they'd be over the cap. We can obviously retain on both of these. So let's actually try that. We might be able to swing this. Minnesota might not be good enough next year. I don't know. Even if we're chain on both of these, will that be enough? Will they be under? Yes, that would actually be league approved. However, the value, even with the retention, I don't think is enough to get that pick the first from next year. I still think it's a good idea to grab it. But... Let's see. Yeah, they do have Fiala now. He is going to get better, so it's... Dumba can still get better. Stahl, Parise, Suter should all, quote-unquote, decline or begin to decline. Let's see. I'll likely have to throw in another asset, though. Which is the issue. Um, let's if they go for this, then I'll take it. It's we're still getting a first, even if it's it becomes like a late first. It's still a first for these two guys. I don't think they'll it'll go through though. Just too far off. Yeah. All right. Let's. All right. I'll keep Minnesota in mind. We'll keep the retention on there because it'll help. Uh, I think they'll be too low next year. But the I'm looking for a champion team. Here we go. These guys could you could lose a lot to free agency. So this is one that you really want to go for. Yeah, next year. Yeah, next year, the 2021st. Let's see with the retention. Oh, they'd have too many skaters. Rip. All right, let's take back just someone here. Lowest value we can think of. Maybe even on the block. Uh, I feel like this guy would have potential. At least of some sort. Uh, Chris Kunitz has none. One year left. Let's say we take Chris Kunitz. I know he's not. Oh, wow. We'd have to take two skaters back. Hmm. That's league approved, but uh, I don't know. With the retention, it still might go through. The value is going to look a bit inflated because it's two, two players being in there, but we'll see what they say to this. Uh, no, too far off. Damn, Columbus would have been really good to go for. All right, Ugh, Colum damn. Yeah, I would have really liked to get Columbus's. Boston only wants one of these guys. Now, these guys can fall off, but they're full on space. Winnipeg, champion team. They, they usually don't fall off second year. But let's check out what their situation is. No, they're not going to fall off. I mean, they don't have a... Wait, hold on a sec. 
Okay, no, they're still, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I highly doubt. Man, Columbus would be the one to go for. I gotta take, I gotta figure out what I could do with that. I might have to throw in some other asset, but it could be really worth it. Like, really worth it. If this, if they lose a bunch of guys. Oh, now they don't. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I was like, I was just, yeah, forgot that they have like no picks for this coming year. Okay, let's try this again. And I'll actually look for guys, maybe low, low trade value who they want to give up. But they really don't have anyone like that. Everyone low trade value, they actually don't want to give up, which is unfortunate. And we don't know anything about this guy. Yes, he's on the block, but I have a feeling he has some potential. Let's see. In the third round, he could be like a low top nine, which has a decent chunk of potential. Yeah. So that's not really going to do great for us. So I think we should still go for like, you know. Oh, well, actually, let's take guys in their AHL then, since they're not going to, they're going to be less inclined to give up players who are on their NHL squad, even if they're not great. So yeah, I don't think this will change anything. No, not sufficient. Okay. Now I do have... Bowie would have been good to have for that. Thank you for correcting me on the pronunciation. That we won't have to worry about it now. We do have a couple backups. Also a fringe starter. I could throw in the fringe starter. 1951. That seems like a good time to throw in this fringe starter. Is that going to be enough? With the fringe starter in there. Unsigned. Maybe. Yes! Alright. You know what? This could turn out to be really good. If they have a lot of guys, you know, that they can't re-sign, a lot of guys dropping a free agency, and they're somehow really trash next year, that's amazing. And if not, it's still a good trade for a late first. So I'm completely okay with this. And uh, let's fix our lines. We're not going to have depth guys to uh, bring in, but that's okay. Uh, Abdulkader will sit. I'll put Hendricks in. Well, he won't sit. I'm just doing a little three-way switch. Abdelkader, and then Bertuzzi, like that, oh yeah, defenseman, um, our defense is trash, so I'll just throw in Sulak, doesn't really matter, uh, <laughs> oh wow, only one righty right now, doesn't matter, all right, so, let's see, Bernier should be getting the majority of the starts now, not that it'll change much. But he is supposedly better overall. So that's a trade that is going to help us next year, essentially. And, well, that's kind of what we want here. And I'll just take... God dang. Take... <laughs> getting nervous every time the thing's going slow. I think it's going to start acting up again. Uh, so we have... Yeah, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we do have 12 picks for this year. Now, next year, we already have two firsts. Oh, we have two seconds. Two thirds. That's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can pick up two more picks next year. Uh, only one more in the first or second round, though. Might want to go for, like, a first rounder. We'll see We'll see what we have available to work with. Yeah, our pick this year. Good stuff from it. Okay. I believe that's the only trade we need to make. I could trade some of those backups and stuff, but I just drafted them. So there's no need to really do that. And in, uh, in fact, like I don't need to move them. It's not like a dire need or anything like that. I want to take a look at my power play because I, I think I did it right, but I just want to make sure Bertuzzi, yeah, okay, good. Bertuzzi will be on there and whatnot. Cool. All right, so we are essentially ready to get back to the sim here. I did offer guys contracts in the last one, I believe, but let me double check because I did have that thing in Ottawa where I offered guys contracts, saved, exited out, and then it actually didn't offer them the contracts and we had to overspend on the center that we were going to get for like a mil and a half cheaper, which wasn't fun, but it looks like it should carry over. Let's, uh, we'll sim a couple days here and make sure that they all actually go through. Get past the trade deadline here. Yeah, man. All right, Anthony, to see you. Yep, Bertuzzi. Yep, Monte. Yep. All right, yeah, they all accepted. Cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that is hilarious. We uh, were mathematically out of the playoffs by the trade deadline. That is awesome. 
We have 20, at least 20 more games left, and you are mathematically out of the playoffs. Jeez. <laughs> wow. That's impressive. That's an impressive feat. Honestly. Oh, good. That's what I actually needed was an injury right off the bat, and I don't have any more depth, guys. Oh, we do. 69 overall, man. I don't even think he's a defenseman. I don't know what he... Oh, oh no, yeah, we did. Yeah, that's right. Put in Dick Simpson. Oh, it's Dylan Simpson. That's right. The two guys I picked up in trade actually get put on my NHL team. Well, there's... Yeah. There's your two depth guys. All right, Hronik's back. <laughs> get him in there, son. There we are. All right, so continuing to lose here. Not going to be scoring a whole hell of a lot. And uh, yeah, dude, now everyone wants to get injured. That's just what happens, apparently. What goalies can we call up? Waivers. Both of these guys would have to clear waivers. Ugh. <laughs> uh, well, Elvis would be the backup in the playoffs. Watch him, watch someone. I mean, he probably wouldn't be claimed. I don't know. He might be claimed if I sent him back down. I don't know if I want to risk it. The 78 has a good chance to get claimed. All right, Howard, I guess you're the starter again. Enjoy. Elvis is back. Low fringe starter, 24. What's his contract? I don't know if he would be claimed. I hope he wouldn't, but... And honestly, he was just kind of a rental anyway this year, but still. I don't know who this guy is. Put him in. Watch him be better. Yeah, right. All right. Continuing on here. Locker room interactions got boosted. People like Elvis, apparently. Who doesn't like Elvis? Everyone needs a little bit of Elvis in their life. Let's check out our draft class here. Yeah, there's some good stuff. Nice little right winger. Uh... We have a pick between a power forward, sniper, playmaker, and the right wing side of things. Which is pretty good because, uh, yeah, Mantha's not going to be more than a second liner. So I would rather go for the sniper over the power forward even. Even though this guy's, his, he's going to start off great overall. And he does have good release. He's got decent production being where he is playing in the league. Dude, he doesn't take a lot of penalties. Only two penalty minutes in 43 games play. That is impressive. Neither does this guy though. Magic Hands Pro Lease and Good Skating. Again, I'd rather have someone who's actually got that goal scorer trait. Injury prone. But I've heard Capo Caco actually doesn't get injured that much. So I'm less I'm I'm less hesitant than before to pick some of these guys up. There's also this guy. Our Scott has him ranked at four. A plus A, A minus, A minus B, A minus, Magic Hands. Again, no one has that goal scorer trait. Which is unfortunate. But if we land Jack Hughes and we have a goal scorer, so what's it say about this guy? Yeah. Doesn't say that he'll take a lot of shots, but he does. Because he's a creative player. Okay. Well, I will, we should get a pick in. Well, we can go. We can drop as low as the four. So, I mean, we're guaranteed a solid right winger. And that's nice. We'll see what happens. If we win the lottery, like I said, I'll, I'll take use. But if we lose it, I have no problem going for any one of these guys. I don't know who I would prefer, though. And this guy's great, but the uh, Rodin just starts tremendous overall. Like, absolutely tremendous. And yeah, it's another power forward, but still, like, puck protection one-on-one -on -one skill still has a pro release. Still has a great shot, but the fact that does he take a lot of shots, I don't know. Doesn't look like it. 89 and 43. I mean, that's eh, actually a decent chunk. Probably for getting like... Mm, actually, he's, should be getting decent time. Yeah, that's actually good ice time. I believe. This guy's getting about the same amount playing in America. I need to find... Let's compare him to Kako because he should be getting less, right? He should be a bit lower. Yeah, he's getting a lot less ice time. But yeah, you look at the shots... Around the same amount of games played. The other guy only has 15 more shots, but averaging 
five more minutes of ice time per game. So that power forward does not look like a big shot taker. This guy with that amount of ice time. He takes a lot more shots, but usually in the ape, like in the lower competition things, people you tend to have more shots. That's what I was told, and I kind of started to pay attention to that, and it does appear to be so. A plus competition. We'll ch we'll see about this guy. If he, yeah, well, ice time wise, way less ice time. Yeah. All right, but I still really like this. Not I don't know. It's tough. We got to think about the future, not just like, yeah, his overall is going to start off great, but is he, is he the right fit? That's kind of what we're thinking about here. And uh, I actually should. Let's check around. I should actually have more. This guy's not full. Come on. I How do you scout him? Scout him again. I want to get him fully scouted. If he's a damn franchise, I want to know. Scout him again. Okay. These guys are not elite, so I don't have to worry about that. I know them. Okay. Wow. Okay, there we go. We do have uh, three guaranteed low elites. This guy is being scouted, being scouted, not being scouted. I want you scouted. Just doing a little bit of this so I can get ahead of the curve. It looks like a few of them I was scouting around this area have dropped off. There was more. I already assigned a couple, but it looks like they are dropping off. Some top sixes. Ooh, one in the uh, second round here. Good for us. Weak on face-offs. Not so good. Damn. In the second round, he's already weak on face-offs. You don't like to see that. No weaknesses on this guy. That's a good one. All right. Okay, so let's continue here. Uh, all right, more injuries. I do have the sliders set right. It just seems to always happen in that first year. You seem to get a lot of injuries, which is, I don't know why. Wait, oof. We don't have any other defensemen. All right, who wants to play? Forward. No. For the lols? For the lols. Franzen. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to do things for the lols. Bernier is back. And Grand Rapids should make the playoffs. Anyway. Did you play a game? Yeah, you played three. And you didn't do too good, sir. All right. Now, the question is, do I put him... Do I risk sending him through waivers? I mean, I ha I will lose kind of nothing if I do so. I don't think this guy will jump out and be a... Yeah, I'd, I'd rather have my... I'm focusing on my AHL team. I'd rather have them get good. So, really, I'll lose nothing. He'll either be scratched or he'll be claimed by someone else. So... I don't want to do this, but I don't think he might get claimed, but still. What I do kind of like is, uh, I mean, 24 with low fringe. Yeah, he's probably not even going to be a backup, so it really doesn't matter. Just send him down. He'll have to clear waivers, but I don't think he'll be claimed. He did not get claimed. Yeah. Good. All right. Get all of us back in there. And there we go. Let's keep it up now. We have 50 losses on the season. Can we get to 20 wins? Probably. But you never know. Yeah, we got to 20 wins right there. A couple two-game winning streak. Like bosses. Giovanni Smith is fully healed. I don't even think he came out. No. That was a, actually a bit of a long injury for not having to come out. Didn't he get injured like in the last week? That's a Yeah, that's a, kind of a long injury for not having to sit. Another one. Another one. Why not? Another defenseman. Is he, is he back, though? The other defenseman? No. Oh, yes, he is. Sorry. Our, oops. Did I skip that? No, yeah. Apparently, I did. All right, Franzen. You're still in, bud. You're still in. Nice little power forward presence back there. Have they been losing a bunch? No, they've only lost once. Yeah. Now he's... Yeah. I already put him in. Oof. Big shutout. All right, last game against Seattle, losing overtime to him, hoping to win against him and just bump him out of the playoffs. Can't be doing that good. Gustav is back. How's Fr how'd Franzen do on defense? Not bad. A goal in eight games played, and even plus minus. There you go. Lindstrom goes back in there. Got these guys in just for potential sake. All right.
Wow, look at this. Look at this to end the season. Joe Hicketts. More. Just give me more injuries, please. I haven't had enough. And to keep going to the defense. I really like that. You know what? For this guy, I'll actually not screw around. Let's find the best guy we have. Okay, apparently it's Ford. Two-way Ford should be okay. There you go. <laughs> All right, Sveshnikov up to a 77 now. Good season for him. 50. Yeah, 57 points. Not bad. Not amazing. I was looking at 82 games played. I, I thought the AHL played less games. But whatever. Look at friggin' Zadina, though. Point a game. Point per game. That's part of the reason I left him down there. Tear it up. And he really helped carry Christopher Ian. I think if Svechnikov is not on the top unit, power play unit, yeah, that would also be a bit of why. You know what? Let's put him on that top power play unit. I was trying to spread some of the love, but fuck it. Let's stack. Beauty. Yeah, what a freaking year for uh, Zadina down there. Damn. I was hoping to have a nice little like streak there. We're still going to get last place regardless. But I just wanted like a nice little uh nice little no losses in regulation streak. One, two, three, four. You know, five, a little five game, you know, point streak would have been nice to end the season with, you know. But you know, not the biggest of deals. Larkin almost had 60 points. Not too bad, son. Not too bad. Especially on this team. Almost having 60 points. Good for you. All right, so 2.07 goals for per game, 3.52 goals against. Now, we want these to be reversed in about five years' time. 17% uh, of the... I you know what? Our power play was not bad. Penalty kill, on the other hand, yeah, that's bad. Last 10, 5, 4, and 1 in the last 10. So we did good. Had a good last 10 there. So we could at least take that home with us and kind of, you know, have that. Yeah, really good uh, season. Well... Sort of good season. You know what? Pertuzzi got 50 points. He might actually get a bit of stat growth. <laughs> He's an 80 overall. Like I could see I could see him getting bumped up to like 82. Which wouldn't be too bad. He's still a young guy, man. So we can we won't really be able to maintain that though, realistically, but still. Could make him, you know, a trade asset if we don't feel like we're gonna use him long, long term. He's not incredible defensively, but he's solid. Anthony, you didn't quite get 50 points. He was playing a lot of third line. But still, 43 points. He was getting power play time. 14 points on that power play. Not bad. Abdul Kader. Worth that money, for sure. For sure. Ugh. And yeah, everyone else pretty bad. Defensively, look at those plus minuses. Good job, Simpson. Best plus minus on the team. You're a minus one in each game. So your average was horribly worse than everyone else's. But it doesn't matter. Uh, Bernier kept getting worse. <laughs> but it's okay. They both got a shutout. Three of them, in fact. Good for you guys. Okay. So there's our amazing stats for this year. Couldn't have been, couldn't have been any better. Oops. Couldn't have been uh, much better, honestly. With our, the way our team was. I was hoping at least one would hit 60. We were very close. One point off. Oh my goodness. Oh, holy shit. What? Oh my god. Okay. 107 points for Ovechkin. McDavid, Tavares, both with uh, 100 points. But 68 goals for Alexander Ovechkin. 68 Goals. He almost hit 70 goals. That is ridiculous. He is definitely going to be breaking Gretzky's record in this playthrough. Oh my gosh. Wow. My goodness. Unbelievable. Yeah, let's sort by goals here. It's Ovechkin with 68, McDavid with 54, Tarasenko with 48. Like 20. Ovechkin had 20 more goals than his fellow Russian sniper. Ugh. And McDavid's McDavid, like, Jesus, that is... Alright, how many... Let's see, yep, there. <laughs> Kuznetsov was 71 assists. Uh, William Nienander was 70, playing with Tavares. Oh, my goodness. And Phil Kessel is 67. Nugent Hopkins got 60. Probably was playing with McDavid a bunch. At least on the power play. Plus minuses. Ovechkin, Kuznetsov, Oshie. That is a filthy line. 
Wow. All right. Who's the most clutch, though? McDavid, actually, with nine game winners out of 54 goals. Very clutch. Power play goal leader looks like it'll be McDavid as well. 19 goals on the power play. Only 15 for Ovi. 32 points on the power play for McDavid. He should lead in that. Yep. Power play threat, Connor McDavid. Let's check out the shorties here. Adam Henrik with three shorties. Anyone have more points? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, Nick Dowd with five shorthanded points. Okay. Let's check out some takeaways here. Connor McDavid, but he's not going to have a good, good enough face-off percentage, I don't think. Uh, Barzal Crosby. I might actually make a case for the uh, for the Selkie here. Really good face-off percentage. Decent defensive numbers. Doesn't look like he's on penalty kill. But good plus minus. Let's scroll down further. Seems to have a lot to do with who plays penalty kill as well. So, you know what? Let's keep it going here. I'll stick with centers because they only give it to centers. Sort by takeaways. There we are. And look here. Okay. Getzlaff could be a possible contender. Doesn't look like he's taking penalty kill. Taves definitely on penalty kill with that ice time. Kopitar as well, but Taves actually could win the Selkie right now. That's an incredible face-off percentage. There's O'Reilly as well up there. But Taves has got better defensive stats overall than him. Where is Bergeron, though? Really not here at all. Oh, I haven't found him yet. Unless I passed him. I had to have passed him, right? No? Huh. I, th I think it'll be Taves, though. Really. Because, dude, he's way back down here. If he is anywhere. Unless I passed his ass. But, yeah, I think it should be Taves to get that sulky. That's an incredible. Why'd I back out? I didn't mean to press... I don't know why. Sometimes I just... I, I feel, I'm on that screen. I feel the need to press B, which makes zero sense. But it happens. We got to check the defenseman and stuff now. People people want to know. Let's go. All right. So Eric Carlson, 77 points. Most point scoring as a defenseman. Don't know if he'll win that Norris. We'll see. Where's Geo? <laughs> All right. Um... Yeah, Riley with more hits, less blocked shots. Uh, Eric Carlson with the better giveaway takeaway ratio. Very comparable ice time. Better plus minus for EK. Let's check Ghost Despair. More ice time than both of them. Way less hits, less blocked shots. So I think it's going to be between Riley and Carlson here. Unless Burns, unless they give it to Burns. Because 10 points less, high plus minus, but more ice time. More hits, but not as many blocked shots. I, hmm. I'm thinking it'll go to Carlson because he kind of, he beats Riley pretty much kind of everywhere besides hits. But you never know. We'll see, we'll see what happens with that. Could even go lower, but I don't think so. They, they like to take the points into account with like plus minus and probably block shots and hits too. So, I mean, it could go to Riley here because EK doesn't hit. We'll see. Not too sure. All right, let's go to goalies here. Oops, that's 50, 60. Thank you. And let's see. Freddie Anderson. Yeah, wow. Oh, my God. Well, I don't think we're going to have a tie this year, guys, because that looks pretty clear to me. 41 win season, less than 20 reg losses. 13 shutouts, 0.93 save percentage, 2.05 goals against average. That looks pretty cut and dry to me. I mean, wow. I don't, the problem is I don't know if anyone guessed Freddie Anderson. Rip everyone. Don't you dare edit your comments either. I, I know. I know what's going on. <laughs> wow, man. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty hard to give that to anyone else. All right, Elias Pettersson, 70 points, 24 goals, a 46 assists. No one else is even close. 21 points below him is Svechnikov. I, I, no, there's not, there's not even going to be any goal. Oh, there is actually. Ooh, that guy has good stats, but only played 18 games. Carter Hart didn't have the greatest rookie year. But he's okay. Bennington, decent rookie year. 
Not gonna win the Calder. Did I say was I was I saying heart for maybe? Not gonna win the Calder. <laughs> I do that a lot with trophies. I just some reason I have one in my head, and then what comes out of my mouth is just completely different for no reason. Bennington didn't have a bad rookie year, but yeah, not gonna be winning that Calder. All right, so we'll check the fun stats now. Let's see here. Hits, hit leader, Taves 187. No one breaking 200. Really? Come on now. And fights. Let's see. There's usually a big one. Yeah. Oh. Where? Did Reeves just not get signed? Oh, what? Only three fights for Reeves? He got signed by the Sharks. <laughs> oh, now we can live rent free in their building and not just their heads. Good for you, Ryan Reeves. Hope you and Kane worked out your issues. Maybe a nice little fight in practice would have done that. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. God, I love that. I fucking love that. Uh, I love it. I think that's awesome. Wouldn't lie, man. You'd love Reeves on your team. He's just one of those guys, man. You think about him all the time. You you think everyone hates Kane? Yeah, well, you love him on your team. Everyone hates Reeves. Reeves I'm sure you love him on your team. Marshan. I'm hesitant to say Kadri because he's quickly becoming the dirtiest player in the NHL. I know I'll get some dislikes from that, but I'm sorry. The record kind of <laughs> proves that recently all right anyway I'm digging myself a hole here with Toronto fans but sorry all right and that pretty much does it let's check out the progress reports here and see what and if we got any more so Mantha did get some growth here Rasmussen got a little bit and he's in he's in a great place to become like even a second liner honestly He's in a really good spot. And he's got good good stats all around. Where do you get your growth? Yeah, kind of just a little bit of everywhere across the board. I wish your accuracy went up, but it's still okay. And your awareness. I wish your awareness went up instead of your, like, hand-eye. <laughs> Anything. Not bad. Not a whole lot of growth, though. All right, and let me just check. Yeah, it's not like stat minuses yet, so that's good. Just morale. All right, McIsaac. A lot of growth for him. Uh, Zikov as well. Real good for us. Because uh, this is like this guy we drafted. He started like 66 and out to 74. How is he looking like he's built? Uh, ugh. His passing is actually quite low. I hope that actually kind of cut. I mean, you want more awareness, sure. But you, you kind of do need passing still. He's got plenty of time to get it up, but... Still, uh, pretty good shot. Needs more accuracy. Actually getting that defense up there, too, which is good. He's kind of growing in all the right places. You would like to see a bit more to his passing. But, I mean, again, he's got plenty of time to, to get that up there. All right, pair doesn't matter. Fair. This does matter. He's actually grown really well so far. And if he gets another offseason bump, I mean, he could be on really good pace for us. Yeah, you don't need puck playing frequently. Frequency, don't worry about that. Good rebound, really good rebound control for where he's at. Good agility, good speed, good. Okay, there's vision. I was just thinking, hey, vision is gone, doesn't exist anymore. But you got to scroll down. Good recover. Goalies have the yeah. His reflexes could get better. Well, I mean they are. But I mean for where he's at, he's he's pretty good. All right, Maxima Finn again off. The Buffalo Sabre legend now plays defense. 49 overall, get up there. Uh, Zadina did get some growth. He did change overall, don't lie to me. Oh, maybe he didn't. That's a, it is summer. That's not enough morale growth to change. No, he did. He did change overall. He had to have. Maybe. Well, still, he should get another offseason bump. He's still only 19. He should. He is, well, he's ready for NHL right now, but I'm not going to play him there probably until next year. Yeah, he is a, you know what, he could play either side. As the right winger, or as the lefty right winger. So, yeah, kind of does suck that there is all those right wingers in the draft, but, again, we could always switch them back and forth. Wings, you know, kind of interchangeable in a lot of ways. Gendy Svechnikov, again, kind of only need, only going to be able to get this guy to like third line utility score at best at this point. I mean, 77 to 22, you're, you're cutting it close there. Giovanni Smith, hoping he could become a bottom six guy. 
Nice solid grinder. Decent defense, not amazing. All right, let's just sort by potential here and see if we had anyone not really doing much. Clef Bomb didn't do a whole lot by the looks of it. Unless he started lower and it, it did the potential change thing. Might have happened. I feel like all of our low elites that we got were like in the 40s. Maybe not. All right, not too bad though. Some solid growth over this year. I want to see where McIsaac's is. It just spread across the board or do you get like, yeah, mostly just spread across the board. No like crazy stats anywhere. All right. Well, that is that. So the draft will be in the next episode. So get ready for that. We'll see what the lottery results are if we uh, somehow get lucky and grab Hughes. But again, I'm not going to be trading up for him if we don't get it. I've had, I had him in the New York franchise. I'm not going to like move for him just to get him. Uh, but if we win the lottery, I will take him. Obviously, he's solid. We need a number one C. And uh, we're not likely going to be able to get one in this draft. So we'll have to look for that maybe in the next draft. Anyway, that will do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And remember to leave that like. And I'll see you in the next one. If watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you, be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow. And you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.